Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys and I'm glad to be back, back with you to share a word with you today on a scripture I found in the Bible concerning the ascension of Jesus Christ. We know that he died, he, he rose again and then he ascended back into heaven. And I want to speak on the marvelous ascension of Jesus Christ which is so important to us as Christians. Our divine leader and Lord lives today. He lives to help us. He wants to help you right now, give you strength, to keep you going, to help you up when you fall, and love you in all times. <clears throat> and know that the fire is not too hot that he can't walk with you right through it, and you will not be burned. I want to read to you a scripture in the book of Acts, <clears throat> where it says, Luke says, that the other day when Jesus was taken up through the power of the Holy Spirit, and gave these words to his apostles, to whom he himself showed himself alive and uh, uh, after his uh, sacrifice on the, on the cross he showed by many infallible proofs and to the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them he commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem until they received the promise of the Father which, which he said you heard of me for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And so we see there's, there's ample proof that Jesus Christ rose from the grave. He was seen of many over in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians in the 15th chapter, verses 3 through 5. We read these words. For I have received how that Christ, this is written by Paul under the power of the Holy Spirit, that how Christ uh, died and that he rose again according to the scriptures and that he was seen of Peter then of the, the twelve apostles and after that he was seen of about uh, uh, more than 500 people at one time and then also he was seen of James and then also of all the apostles and also of me as one of his apostles born out of due time and so we see there are infallible proofs that Jesus ascended and came out alive from the grave and he was on this earth for 40 days talking to different people before and they saw him and before he ascended and went back into heaven where he is now in his glory and he's praying for you and he's loving you and he's guiding now his people and he's building now his church and I want you to believe it the marvelous ascension of Christ hallelujah he rose again. Our Lord lives, and He lives today in you. The Bible teaches that He said, Don't leave until you have the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. Jesus had left us, because in His bodily existence on earth, He could only be at one place at one time. But when He ascended into the Father, He sent the Holy Spirit, which is really His Spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit can indwell in the hearts of all His people, all the time, everywhere, and anywhere. And so the same Spirit that dwells in you, dear Christian, dwells in me. And we have the Spirit of Christ in us. The hope of glory is Jesus Christ. And so we see that they were, he said that John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. To be baptized is to be immersed. It means immersion. It means we're put under. And, and, uh, and, and so it's important for us to see that. And so we need to be immersed in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to be put in, under. We mean to be saturated with the Holy Spirit, just like you're saturated with water when you're buried in baptism. And so may the Holy Spirit fill you and bless you as we need Him today, the Spirit of Christ. There's a precious, precious promise over in the book of Luke, the 11th chapter, verse 13. Remember that scripture, Luke 11, 13. And Jesus said, If you then, being evil, know how to give good things unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? And so you see, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to ask the Lord God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then you're filled with the work and the witness of Christ. What does it mean to be filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Over in the Bible, in the book of, uh, of uh, Philippians, 
uh, in Ephesians rather, uh, and uh, we read these these words that are very very important. Uh, verse uh, Philippians verse one and 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 verse eleven chapter one verse eleven of Philippians. It says, <clears throat> "Be filled with the fruits of this of the righteousness which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. Be filled with the fruits of righteousness, and the fruit of righteousness is contained in the in the in the fruit of the spirit. Over in the book of Galatians, it, it teaches us the fifth chapter of the Galatians how that we can be filled with the spirit." And then it lists the holy, the fruit of the spirit, and the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace, and it's also patience and long suffering and faith and goodness and gentleness and self control and self denial. Now this is the fruit of the spirit, and it's wonderful fruit: love and joy and peace, patience, goodness and faith that will get us through this life. It's the fruit of the Spirit, so we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And when we're filled with the Spirit of God, the Lord is going to bless us. And He's going to bless us because we are in His strength, not ours. And He's doing it instead of us. And so I love you, but it's a love Him that's loving you through me. We love even our enemies, not with our love so much as it's His love in us that helps us to love them. And so the Lord gives us a new nature. He gives us a new feeling in our hearts. He gives us a new outlook on life. And He leads us in the way that guides us and shows us the truth. We need to know that and to follow where He leads and God will bless us. Over in the book of Acts again in the first chapter we read these words that, that, that Jesus said after He had said these things He was taken up and received out of their sight. And while they looked up to heaven, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, two angels. And they said, Ye men of Galilee, why are you gazing up into heaven? When, when you must know this, that he that is taken up from you will so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So he was taken up and ascended up into the clouds, and they saw him not anymore. And so he said, we know that he's coming back the same way. He's coming back bodily. We'll see him. We'll see him as Jesus Christ the Lord, the risen Savior, the wonderful King of kings and Lord of lords. And he loves you so much and he's coming back for you. He loves you so much that he don't want to be in heaven without you. He wants you there with him. He loves you so much that he died for you. And he was buried. And that he rose again. Praise God that he ascended. He ascended back into heaven where he is at the right hand of God right now. Oh, my dear friend, I want you to put your trust in him right now as the Lord of your life. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, if you're not sure you're ready for him when he comes, I want you to pray this brief prayer with me. The Bible says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pray this prayer and mean it from your heart as best you can. Say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He paid for all my sins. I believe He rose again. I'm asking you to come in my heart. Oh, holy God, help me live for you as the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Pray a prayer like that. And you'll be ready for His coming. And you'll be ready to live down here for that time that he, until He comes. So God bless you, dear friend. Let us ever be grateful, knowing the truth, and recognizing forever that Christ is our Lord, and He has risen in a marvelous ascension and is at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. God bless you. Amen.